Hello fellow modelers, Bruce here. Well, I'm about to start building another model by Campbell Scale Models. Um, I'm working in an area where I would like to have a small luncheonette or cafe. And although I have two already built, both of which were named after different granddaughters, um, they're both a little bit too big for uh, the area that I have available. And so I started looking through my stacks of stuff and uh, I came on this uh, dual kit by uh, Campbell and it contained, um, the two kits that it contained were a barber shop and a pharmacy. And uh, although I don't need either a barber shop or a pharmacy right now, um, I am going to take the pharmacy, the drugstore, which has a peaked roof behind a false front and a very attractive cutout in the corner here where the doorway is recessed. Um, I'm not sure you see it very good in the picture, but I'll show it to you in the schematics. And I'm going to convert that into a small cafe. Um, later I'll build the barber shop. It's very utilitarian. It's got a, a sloped uh, shed roof on it, not a peaked roof. Uh, very easy to build. But um, as with all um, Campbell kits, you get two things. You get a sheet of print instructions and uh, barber shop. Every part for it is in a glassine envelope labeled bag A. So that's what that looks like. So bag A I did not open. And then the uh, pharmacy, the drugstore, uh, is in bag B, and that I did open. So I'm sorting through the parts. So these are the print instructions, two pages, front side, back side. And uh, the diagrams, schematics. Um, this is for the barber shop. And you can see that it has, as I said, a shed roof, a slant roof, false front, as you can see in this drawing. Uh, and a kind of uh, is a nice little structure. Um, it would make up into something that looks like this one right here. Okay. On the back side are the schematics for the drugstore, and it's a more a little more complicated kit. Um, here's where you can see, I think, in this drawing, the recessed opening. The door is here. There's a window on the side, a double window here, which is nice for a cafe. Uh, side window here. Um, so yeah, I think uh, this will be a fun build and uh, really not very complicated. It would be a good one to start with if you haven't uh, made any Campbell kits before. So all I've done so far is open bag A and sort through to get uh, my wall pieces out, which since it's a nice day here, even though it's uh, third week of February, uh, we hit 50 degrees today, so I went out in the garage and gave the walls a spray paint of kind of a taupe color. Yeah, some men know what taupe is, especially if they're married, and their wife has pocketbooks by that color. And uh, the base that it goes on is to look like a, oh, a kind of like a boardwalk, and uh, that I painted gray like... Uh, most porches and steps are. So we'll see if these colors survive, but at least I have a base coat down. Um, a lot of other things in here, the, the Z type corner posts that uh, Campbell's known for, and some trim pieces, and uh, roofing pieces, and the various windows. There's some single windows. Here's those uh, double windows that uh, I showed you the door, two doors actually, one for the back and one for the front, and some corbels for some fancy work in uh, that door area, and uh, that's it. So uh, yeah, I'm going to start by doing what the instructions say, which is uh, gluing some of these pieces together to give me the various walls. Only one side wall and the back, back wall are in one piece. 
Everything else has at least two pieces of uh, material that have to be glued together to form the walls. So I start doing that. I'll cut out the openings. They're die cut. Uh, clean them up and test fit the uh, windows and doors. Uh, then I'll start painting the trim, the trim color, those windows and doors and any wood trim, the corner posts and so forth, and start the assembly. And when I do, I'll be back to this video. So, see you then. Okay, step one, um, after giving everything an initial coat of spray paint, was to uh, cut out all the window openings that had been die cut into place. Uh, Campbell did a good job on these and uh, cleaning them out with uh, number 11 blade over here was not difficult and uh, luckily did not split any of the wood and so you can see now that all of the uh, window door and vent castings uh, fit nicely in place what I have to do next is uh, trim a few of the battens off to let the uh, window frames fit flush. Um, always a pain in the neck when you're building a board and batten with board and batten siding, but it's got to be done. So that's the next step. I um, think I am going to go out to the garage today and get these three doors. Another quick uh, shot of the paint because they're a slightly different hue uh, than the rest of them. So uh, I'll go do that take care of the battens, and then time to glue some walls together. Talk to you again soon. Just a quick tip, um, especially if you're scratch building, but uh, also appropriate for when you're building a kit like this. If you have a building that has a false front, like this, where it sticks up above a peaked roof, um, you're going to need some way on the rear of the uh, false front wall to um, well, glue glue the subroof to it. So here, this shows you a, a pretty good picture, I guess, if you're, well, here, this one's better. If you're looking from the rear of the building, uh, here's the peaked roof, and this here is the false front. So you need to be able to have some support similar to this on the rear of the false front. So before you do any gluing of anything together, um, what you do is you take your rear wall, let's make sure that that's in the picture here. You take your rear wall, which is this. This is the back of my uh, front, false front wall. In the meantime, put the front wall face down, put the rear wall on it, getting it lined up. And then we're just going to trace that, uh, that line. Okay, take a pencil, trace the roof line and later we will glue the supports onto that but if you forget to do that and you put the building together you got a problem all right talk to you again soon one of the three ways that I address corners on structures that I'm building whether it uh, comes in a kit or whether I'm scratch building is with the use of these uh, Z-shaped corner posts like you've seen me use with uh, Campbell's kits. And uh, the way you handle that is to simply put some glue sparingly down in the groove. You don't want it oozing out all over the place. And if you have uh, walls that have peaked roofs involved, you should glue these onto the peaked roof walls rather than uh, the side walls because you want to let them extend a little bit 
and uh, then trim it off once it's dry. So you put it on. I'm just going to let this sit on this one for a minute. Wipe out the excess glue with a toothpick. Always clean up the, your, your joints before they dry. Okay, so there's one corner post. Now not only is this going to give you another gluing air, uh, surface uh, for the side wall, but it also gives you your corner trim. So you want these painted ahead of time. So I'm going to put the other side on and let that uh, dry and then trim, trim off the excess to the same uh, angle as the roof. Okay, time for another update on the build of the Campbell drugstore that I am making into a little cafe. And, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to do, of course, is to uh, make it look more at home in a more modern setting than what it was designed for. And I'm going to accomplish that in a few ways. Um, you know, the Campbell in their advertising made it look like an Old West type of structure, which it certainly was, <clears throat> but structures survive over time. They get modified, upgraded, painted, remodeled, whatever. So here's a couple of things I'm going to do to make this look like it would fit in a more modern era. First, instead of leaving the walls just stained um, with an alcohol and India ink wash, I uh, painted them, painted the trim a contrasting uh, compatible color. I will not be mounting this on the wooden boardwalk that used to go around it. Um, put uh, some draperies and uh, window treatments in uh, using decorative ribbon from uh, Michaels or Hobby Lobby. Um, I have printed out some pictures off the internet and sized them up so the back wall looks like it's a uh, cafe going out into the distance with some tables. Uh, this wall just has an advertisement for coffee on it. And uh, on the floor I have uh, put some black and white check tile. This picture printed out on paper and cut and put in place. And a little very simple table with a tablecloth. Again, tablecloth is printed on paper with a picture from the internet. This will be glued on top and the floor also becomes the foundation. Uh, let's see what else. <clears throat> For the entranceway, I have a piece of uh, very thin birch plywood that I've cut that will slide right into place there. And then what I will do is, come on you, uh, I will cover that with, uh, again, some paper that will either be uh, tile, like a ceramic tile entranceway into the cafe, or a brick, or a stone of cut stone, or something, but it will be in the, in the stone family. A uh, sign will go on the front for the cafe. The roof, instead of being uh, Campbell shingles, I'll probably do with uh, slate because this is going to be in the town of East Bangor, which had its, uh, its own slate pits in it. And so that's how I modernize it. I must say I am always amazed when I build a Campbell kit at the engineering and thought that went into it. So, you know, this nice little uh, entry alcove, for instance, uh, two separate uh, pieces of siding, board and batten, uh, you can see better almost, I think, from looking at the inside here. This piece with the door on it 
went into the Z angle brace and was to come out parallel to the rear wall. And that just kind of hangs there. And then they gave you this tiny little piece with the window that comprises the other angled wall of the alcove. That on this side, on the, its right side, goes into the uh, Z brace, but not at 90 degrees like mostly. You just put some glue in there and that's going to hold it. And then this side r rests on one of the battens that's on this wall. You can see they let it extend a little bit further and they arranged it so there would be a batten there for you to glue it. It's just amazing. Um, Roof, you had to cut to the size. They gave you some uh, scribed uh, strip wood or uh, sheeting that uh, became the roof. And they did provide a lampshade. I, I didn't use theirs. I'll save it for some other use. But I had some pre-wired uh, lamps of that type that I put up there. So the only lighting in this is going to be the one over the entranceway. So now I'm ready to... Uh, put some trim around this uh, roof uh, area here under the alcove and then I can glue it in place uh, onto the uh, flooring and then it's time to do some fancy work on top of the false front and put the roof on. Alrighty, uh, that's it for this update. Talk to you again soon. Okay, another quick update on the Campbell Drugstore build. Um, if you've ever built any of the Campbell kits that have a false front, you know that they top it off with a couple different layers of uh, uh, different sizes of strip wood. And it actually, you know, ends up looking like it should. And uh, it's a nice technique. And if you go back and look at my Banger Slate office, which was the uh, Campbell uh, Columbia Gazette kit, you'll see... Uh, a stack of different uh, pieces of strip wood on the top of that false front. And they provided some uh, of their styrene corbels for underneath uh, that first uh, piece of wood up there. Uh, you can see now I have that uh, lamp above the uh, door entrance, floors glued on, ridge beam is in place, uh, and now I'm getting ready to do the roof. The material I usually use their cardstock but you can see that this has been wet I don't know whether somebody dropped their coffee on it or what's so a previous owner but um, this is half of that sheet this is the one for the barber shop that I haven't built yet but the pieces for this kit were also warped and I decided not to use them and I cut some instead out of 132nd inch thick birch plywood, which is kind of my go-to if I'm scratch building a structure and I want to use a roof. So cut those the same size as these and now what I'll do is uh, draw some parallel lines on it to guide my uh, shingles and uh, proceed with the shingling. Alright, talk to you again soon. Okay, the build of the little Campbell scale models a pharmacy that was designed like an old west town uh, store with a wooden boardwalk and uh, cedar shake shingles and uh, no paint on the walls etc uh, has become the Hansel and Griddle Cafe and uh, you know just you can see kind of the things that helped look like make it look like a much more modern building um, Nicely painted with contrasting trim work, um, curtains and draperies on the windows, a slate roof rather than the uh, wood shake roof, and instead of a um, boardwalk going all the way around it, I have uh, put a little foundation under it. It's also the floor, and I did like a tile entryway here. Um, so yeah, it looks more like something that instead of being uh, you know, early to mid 1800s in a western town, it looks something like you might see uh, still surviving to this day on, uh, in some little towns 
across the country. So uh, yeah, made up very nicely. It'll fit fine. Now the kit was designed to have a porch, a kind of uh, porch roof and stuff back here. But if you remember when I started uh, this video, I talked about how all the ones I had built were ended up too big for the space I have. And that same thing here. I really need a shallow building, and this will fit the bill. There is a light up under the uh, roof here in that alcove that works rather nicely and uh, will look nice. So yeah, uh, this is all ready now to go into place. And another good example of how you can take a kit and repurpose it um, for your time and your place, it's what you need. You just have to look at it and say, hmm, wonder how that would do. Well, the other thing I uh, didn't put on, and again helps modernize it, is the exposed ra rafter tails on uh, both sides. So, yeah, that's that's it. Nice little building for the layout. And uh, at some point you'll probably see it in the background as trains run by and maybe with that light on. All right, as always, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not done so, uh, please subscribe to my channel. All righty. Talk to you again soon.